in addition to myself, Brett James Stewart. Uh, we have Scott Lavender, whom, whom you see ahead in the film here. He is the principal photographer for Blue Ridge Hiker. And he will be measuring the trail today and taking photographs and video aside from the GoPro footage. This is Staten Road. And this is the beginning. This is the entrance to the visitor center. It's nice. Got some nice rock work here. There's a sign, Buck Forest Road. And we shall begin our hike. This is a large parking area, graveled. Very nice. With a very well done visitor center. They also have a few odds and ends here, I think. I believe there's a classroom. I guess that's probably for school children who come up for field trips. The kiosk with the trail systems here. There are a number of trails accessible from here. Uh, the This parking area is also known as High Falls Access Area. The Aline Steinberg Center, named for a supporter of DuPont State Forests. Very pleasant looking lady. She's got a painting of her in the visitor center. The visitor center is now closed. What I mean is it's closed right this second while I'm here. It's open in general. kiosk with the trails right here in this area some other information like you'd expect at the kiosk nicely done an attractive gate here a nice crow we'll throw the crow footage in there for you at no extra charge covered bench. Here's the junction with High Falls and Buck Forest Road. We're going to take Buck Forest Road. What's that road coming in there? Maybe the new road off of the parking area, the other end of it. Not certain if that's the case, but I think so. on Buck Forest Road right now. We're heading toward Conservation Road. Many of the trails in DuPont are actual roads like this. Uh, others are roads that are narrower, or roads that are going wild, if you will. So they're closer. A lot of the trails are graveled. Uh, the roads make the trails easier, especially, I guess, for cyclists.
backed up water. I think it's actually a creek. I think it just gets, gets backed up. It's slow moving, I believe. Or no, I guess maybe just overflow wet water, wet weather rather. Creek. Jack pine beside a couple jack pines beside a oak tree. DuPont is what's called, um, mostly is what's called a cove hardwood forest. Predominantly hardwood, but you'll find a lot of pines, white pine and other kind. White pine is the most common, I suppose. And the cove portion of the moniker refers to the mountain coves with the valleys and so forth. The, va the valley floor pattern creates little coves. Very common in western North Carolina. Junction with the uh, Triple Falls Trail. <coughs> These bushes with the white flowers, it's the time of year. <coughs> ah, excuse me, they bloom. Each one blooms every other year. It is uh, it's called Mountain Laurel, what it technically is. It's called a lot of folia. Around here in the Carolinas and Virginia, it's referred to as ivy bush. Frequently confused with the, <coughs> what we call laurel. It's a rhododendron maximum. It's a rhododendron. No, point that out when I see some. Here's a young one. This is a laurel right here and this is an ivy bush the ivy bush has shorter leaves the cut for the gas line in either direction Coming into view is the Covered Bridge, which is a popular destination or feature of this area. The Covered Bridge is on Buck Forest Road. It crosses the Little River just above High Falls, just upstream. Cover bridge is very well done. It's very attractive. It has great rock work. But really, folks who keep up DuPont Forest really put their love into it. You can tell it's very nice. There's a little river access here. A small, well, it's also the little river access. <laughs> There's a small access here. It's good to see the chain link fence or the uh, split rail fence, pardon me. 
This is a junction with Buck Forest Road and Covered Bridge Trail. Covered Bridge Trail is very short. It connects Buck Forest Road with Triple Falls Trail. <clears throat> you can get down to the river there. See nice stonework, woodwork here. Up in the top there, the eaves, you can see the laurel or ivy bush uh, trim, I guess you would call it. And I'll <clears throat> show you the river. This is the very top of High Falls. <clears throat> Beautiful here. This is the evening, incidentally. We uh, it's about five o'clock or so. Here's upstream. Nice and quiet here. It makes me wish I were canoeing. Here's the junction with Conservation Road, Buck Forest Road. Buck Forest Road, from this perspective, continues on straight. Well, really, this is kind of a fork, but the left fork would be Buck Forest. <clears throat> Conservation Road connects Buck Forest Road, and it goes all the way on to the other end at Fawn Lake, accessible most readily off of Reason Over Road. <clears throat> We're going to turn right. A nice low kind of boggy area when it's wet. <clears throat> <clears throat> Weather's nice today, it's a little bit warm. Breezy, overcast, it's a little darker. It's normally not this dark at this time. Hey, how are y'all? Beautiful day for a hike. <laughs> Have a good evening. Pitch Pine Trail, the Conservation Road Trail. Pitch Pine, <clears throat> I think, is a loop. Come back in down here, further down. Spur trail or something there that probably goes down to the river, the little river. <clears throat>
to smell an old fire. Yes, actually you can see some water there. I don't know if that's the main river or if that's... Surely it is. It's too large to be a feeder creek. Little River is indeed small at this point. We're near where it forks out. Yeah, I can see the black of a fire there. Maybe a control burn from last season. Large white pine. Hemlock. A couple of nice hemlocks. See they're dying. our forest long unless they figure out how to counter that. make tea out of pine needles. Steam them for a pretty good while. I don't think that, uh, in my opinion, it's not particularly good. A lot of people use it for medicine, but you can just drink it. And I personally think the white pine tastes the best, but you can use any of the pine needles. my hiking stick today and I miss it. I had the hiking stick when I was doing some other trails that kept showing up in the in the video. So I didn't bring it today to see how the, the video looks a lot better without watching my hand and hiking stick running in and out of the frame. grove on either side of the road here especially to the right there's usually a creek in the bottom like this but I don't see one <clears throat> there is one. In junction with Joanna Road Trail, Conservation Road Trail. I'm adding trail, they're on the maps, they just say Conservation Road or Joanna Road, but I use the 
the term trail to designate, you know, a walking trail, trail that you would hike normally. Many of them, as I mentioned before, in DuPont are roads. So you'll find like conservation road trail and so on. It's pretty common. Another nice semi-open area here to the right. Create what's called edge habitats where the forest comes up to a more area that's more like a field or semi-field. Some people claim that they're great for the wildlife as it creates additional food sources Others argue that it's not a natural occurrence and there, therefore should be <clears throat> avoided. You know, essentially you just shouldn't do it. But I don't have an opinion myself, but there is some question as to whether or not the edge, edge habitats are viable or not, beneficial or not. I shouldn't say viable. The nice light greens of the leaves. There's a wild rose bush. Oh wow. What a great aroma. These are pretty when they bloom. I mean when they flower. Yeah, they're pretty when they bloom too. sign in the fence and something up there I don't know don't know why that is some sort of notice on these trees oh it's a hemlock restoration study I was mentioning that hemlocks before the woolly adelgid gets in them and eats on them and basically strangles if you will the tree the tree gets to where it can't get enough nutrients. They're doing some sort of study on them here. The plight of the hemlock reminds me strikingly of the chestnut tree, which is pretty well gone. There is a chestnut conservation project where they're trying to figure out how to breed that 
trees or propagate trees that are blight, the chestnut blight uh, is what was killing them, blight resistant. Here is Three Lakes Trail in junction with Conservation Road Trail. But the hemlocks, <clears throat> both of these were the blight and the woolly adelgid were introduced by bringing in foreign plants and things to which the native species had no resistance. We lost the chestnuts pretty well everywhere. They still sprout and you can still find young chestnuts but after, after a certain period of time the blight kills them. So they never get beyond sucker size or sapling size perhaps but they don't grow up to regular trees without I guess maybe never. I'm not sure if those that they're trying to propagate get larger or not. But I'm talking about what you find in the wild. The hemlocks, the good thing about the hemlocks is they figured out, people realized what was happening with the hemlocks faster than with the chestnut blight of the early 20th century, <coughs> early to mid. And so I think that they'll be able to save the hemlocks and the hemlocks eventually will reinstate themselves the forest being the mixed hardwood forest it's got en enough diversity that the forest itself is going to be okay uh, even with the loss of the hemlocks but we don't want to lose them they're beautiful and they also help or as you know everything's symbiotic the way the Lord made everything everything interconnects the hemlocks are important because they're frequently along creek beds and things and it keeps the water temperature cool for like the brown trout and that's just the one I know I'm sure other species and things benefit from it here is the little river again <clears throat> have a nice wooden bridge Get to where you can see here. A little cascade there. Got some sort of propagating some trees or something over here too. The view downstream. We got trees in the blue. I'm gonna say sleeves. I don't know what those would be called technically. On either side of the river. You see the river's quite small here this high. It's Lake Julia Spillway. Lake Julia is one of the three lakes from Three Lakes Trail. I believe Alfred Lake is the other one and, or one of the other ones and Lake Dents I think. I may be misspeaking. I'm saying that from memory from looking at the map. I've not hiked the trail myself. Hi how are you? Hardwood trees planted and protected with tree shelters. I guess tree shelters are what those are called. <clears throat> Normally you can't drive back in here, so I don't know. I don't know if that woman works here or what. I think the lake, that looks like a lake uh, dam uh, right here at the top of the little horizon, the immediate horizon here. Um, I guess maybe that's lake, maybe the edge of Lake Julia. <clears throat> well, of course it would be because it's a spillway. Excuse me, wouldn't necessarily be at the edge of the lake, edge of the dam. There it is again. Coming down to here. All the lakes in DuPont are artificial. 
fact, I think all the lakes in Transylvania County are artificial. The terrain is not conducive to lakes. Here we can see the tree shelters, the blue tree shelters again. <coughs> Some kind of plowing or something going on in the center there. The dead pine tree. Marked contrast to the green. Yeah, it's thundering. It doesn't actually rain on us, but Water's nice for the waterfalls. Some kind of road to the right here. Well, actually, it goes off to the left here as well. No sign or anything, so it's not a hiking trail. This is Bridalville Falls Road, a large rock. Now these are oak trees. They're pretty. Yeah, it's Bridalville Falls Road Trail. Six miles one way. Waterfall, Bridal Veil Falls, named because it resembles a little bit of fancy a uh, bridal veil <laughs> that a bride would wear. portion of the road is easy. I believe it is designated easy on the map. A nice rock face here on the right. DuPont's full of these guys. Very rocky. Pretty rare to have a trail of any distance that doesn't have some sort of rock face or something. 
a nice fenced in area. Looks like there's a stable there. Or a barn or something. tables and things. A little shed or something. A little room. A truck. I don't know what's in the, I don't know. They store hay in there or what? I don't know what this is for. I mean obviously it's for horses and things, but I don't know. Like what like why? I don't know if this is uh, place where horsemen come to camp and things or what? The rocks are typically on the top toward the top of areas but they can be you know pretty much anywhere it's more common up toward the top as the soil's thinner well the sign is gone that might tell us what this is a nice purple laurel there and I say a couple of them what does it say Something trail. Purple laurel. Purple laurel. Barn trail. Aptly named, I guess. Uh -huh. Walk back to Rottleville Falls Road here. Continue on. this time of year the wild roses some of the briars I guess they may be blackberries raspberries or something and the ivy bush the laurel generally blooms in June although of course that depends quite a bit on the sunlight and warmth climate if you will, microclimate, wherever they happen to be located, but generally speaking they bloom in June. So what are the strawberry blooms, the wild strawberries along the ground?
snake. Phew. And I don't have my stick. I evidently do not have good aim. I'm not trying to kill it, I'm just trying to get to move. I can't get it to. Probably could just walk around it, but I'm afraid of snakes actually. Yeah, that's why I'm pulling back. I guess I'm just gonna walk to the side. I don't know if it'll be mad at me or not. side here. I do believe that this is the end of that trail, the Brattleville Falls Road Trail. We'll turn around a little circular area here and the falls just beyond. I'm not sure technically where the trail itself ends. I don't know if it ends right here at the road or if it ends at the observation area, but we're going to walk up to the area so that you can get a look at the falls. Horse tie out to the right. The screen. The holly. So junction with Cornmill Shoals Trail, Cornmill Shoals Road, I believe it is on the other side, <coughs> connects um, <coughs> Cascade Lake Road on the other side, or ends at Cascade Lake Road on the other side, Cornmill Shoals access area. Some fencing and things. Here is the Observation deck. Bridal Veil viewing platform. Trail goes on down to the bottom. I'm, I'm not sure where this trail ends, to be honest. I think it ends here at this platform, but obviously there's a gravel trail there that gives access to the river, so. Let's, let's follow it and assume that it goes to there. I think it does, maybe. Well, this says dead-end trail there. Makes it maybe seem like 
we're past the end, but we're going to walk out anyway. You see the falls here. It's actually a cat. This portion of it is a cascade. <clears throat> see an actual waterfall up there. Drops down and runs, and then runs out this cascade here. Very beautiful set of falls. It's large too. <laughs> 